I've taken on the challenge to build a massive medieval city in hardcore Minecraft. Today, we're doubling the size of what I've built already. Heading down to the river, I'm building an entire industrial district to show where the city gets its building materials. Leave a like and please subscribe if you're new to help me reach 1.4 million subscribers. I have new merch. Bring home your own limited edition goblin foot from the Empire's SMB series. And check out the makeshift link in the description to learn more. Goblin Flip comes with a bonk stick to help keep you safe, so order yours before it's gone forever. Now, like all flip builds, this is gonna start with a lot of digging. And I'm gonna need a beacon to make that happen. With that done, I want to first expand the main river to allow for larger boats to move through. Wait a second here. How did I miss that waterfall up here? That that is beautiful. Look at that thing. Okay, uh, small distraction. Small distraction time. I think this is going to work as a really cool canal coming through the city to divide up the houses and create even more space other than just buildings in here. That should work for digging out the entire canal coming all the way up to the mountain. But I do want to turn this into like a small lake in here so it doesn't, you know, go into the caves. This time I was nice and let the animals out instead of burying them underneath the landscape. So I think that's a pretty good win. From here, the water is going to cascade down on the mountain to reach the main river where I'm working on placing in a few retaining walls so that I can have the city raised up a little bit above the water's edge. I do like the idea of having another waterfall right here just before it reaches the main river, but maybe instead of being like eight blocks tall, we just go to here. If I do this correctly, I might be able to even slowly drop it down to meet the water's edge. You know what? That's uh, that's close enough. That, that'll be fine right here. Grabbing a little bit more dirt and we'd expand the little riverbed area. Oh, hi, hi, hi there, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Um, maybe I should light up all of this because I am creating a lot of mob spaces. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. It's fine. Everything's fine. You know what? That's a future flip problem. Back to the project at hand as it's already a distraction. Plus, if the mobs are spawning down there, they're less likely to spawn inside the city, which is a win. Now I just need to send the water all the way down and this should be pretty perfect. We've got a lot more terraforming to do, but I'm really happy with this so far. This is already a flip certified video. We've cleared out a bunch of terrain and done a random little side project. But now let's get back to the industrial district. To make this a real industrial district, I want a system that's gonna convert dirt into mud. If you didn't know, you can place a block of dirt down, get a water bottle, and turn it into mud. This is a micro farm by Il Mango that doesn't require too many materials, so I quickly got them all together. I think I want to build this a bit into the hill here so it's easy to hide a structure around. Before we can test it out, I need two more things. First being a ton of glass bottles. A little bit more than that. Quick trip down into the villager cave. Ow. I can grab some emeralds in here to run up to the next level and visit all of my librarians. Glass, please. Got a few extras here, but that should do it. With these, I can fill the dispenser in the back and the hopper back here. The next item is a little bit more difficult to get. This is gonna require a trip over to the monolith to grab a little bit of gunpowder, which I can use to craft TNT. As I need a new netherite shovel. Taking a quick trip, hopefully down into the nether, we can just start a new netherite tunnel off of the edge of the quarry. With that, it's time to see how much ancient debris I can get with two stacks of TNT. Oh, how did I miss one all the way out here? I uh, will take that. Not the luckiest run, but we did get 11 more ancient debris, which is more than I needed. Excuse you, my tunnel, but it's time to get on out of here. Headed over to the netherite forge. We can smelt all of this stuff down. And I already had a ton extra. Huh. Oh well, now I just have even more. To share how stupidly OP toolsmith villagers are, we can bring our emeralds over here and get a brand new diamond shovel, a mending book, and unbreaking three. I need a grindstone where the only one I can find is up here. To get rid of the efficiency on the shovel, upgrade this to a netherite shovel and throw our mending and unbreaking three on it. Finally, we're ready to test this out. Dirt goes in the offhand, chest piece on just to be safe. If I place this here and then break it a few times, we get mud and there we go. Now it seems to be working pretty well. Okay, maybe not totally perfect, but 
not half bad. Okay, so that wasn't working too well. So I made a regular diamond shovel now this time. Oh, I broke the glass. But that seems to be working much better now. At least a little bit better. It's fine. You can go up there. Right, with this machine sorted, it's time to hide the structure in the first building in the industrial district. I'm gonna need a floor level for the building to sit on. So let's get some coarse dirt, maybe a little more. Some packed mud and packed mud bricks. And since we're here, some polished andesite slabs and stone brick slabs. I'm gonna completely texture this wall here soon, but for now, let's just throw a little topper on. Now from here, I'd actually like the road to be right underneath with coarse dirt to border. And then we can work our way in with a little bit of our packed mud. That'll hopefully look like some tire tracks or just area where people People are moving more consistently. There we go. This is starting to get the vibe that I'm going for in the road over here. We're going to have a second layer for the street to be coming all the way up here behind the building, but we can throw this guy in a little later. Hey, would you look at that? Day 3,400. Woo! Nope, nope, nope. Not hitting the ground. Area is prepped for building, and now I need blocks to build the dang thing, which is going to require a ton of different materials. So I raided my storage room for as much as I could get my hands on before needing to run out in the world and gather some more blocks. I've got nearly everything ready to go in these blocks boxes except some hanging roots which i can get right here and this should be more than enough i've got to convert all of this light gray concrete powder to light gray concrete which i can do super quickly right here in the little pot now the next one, which I think is gonna be a theme in today's episode, I need a lot of cobble deep slate. Each region I build in the city, I want to theme off of a certain colored roof. And I thought darker colors like deep slate and blackstone could be great here. All of this cobble deep slate and zero diamonds, but they are useless, so it's fine. Time to get building. Now this is everything I need. I think I wanna divide this up into two different parts with dripstone and spruce for the base over here. Some more dripstone on this side, wrapping all the way back. And then from here, I'm thinking just some jungle, working up into some mud and mud bricks to be darker. That's looking pretty good. Then here on the inside, I wanna make a giant door. Starting with a little something like this, and then we can bring in some trap doors in the middle as a divider and some giant door handles and flip those back closed. Moving back to the left building, I'm trying to make this section of the city look very, very dirty and grimy. So I went with a ton of different gray blocks to pull off this look. We'll throw the roof on here shortly, but first I want to build a small roof in the form of an awning using some quartz and diorite. Just trust me on this. It should look pretty good in the end. I, I hope. I, I hope. Jumping over to the far side of the build though, I want to extend out an awning. And by awning, I mean balcony. We can carry some spruce up on the corners right here. And then for a pop of color, I'm thinking acacia trap doors for the railing itself. Before we bring a covering on the balcony, I should probably build the walls on the rest of the actual building. But for this, I wanna work from the light gray terracotta into white terracotta. Leaving space for plenty of windows where I think for the first time ever, I wanna make a two by two window with big old glass along the back. From the white terracotta, we can move into a little bit of birch and then stripped birch going all the way up. And now it's time to put the dark prismarine balcony cover on. And then I moved on to building out the roofs, one out of cobble deep slate and the other out of deep slate tiles. With that out of the way, I wanna add in the chimney campfires. Slow campfire with a brick wall on top and spruce trap doors going around. This is gonna really help the place feel a lot more alive as it just adds a subtle amount of movement, which is making this build look really, really cool. Except we can see through it. For this open space on the back, I thought we could use another spruce section to add a door to an upper street level. And for some simple street details, a cart carrying mud on the lower level. Where this is really starting to feel good, minus the shulker monster, but I need to keep in adding more of the workman's quarters industrial vibe. And I'm in the water. Which did give me an idea for texturing the retaining wall with a ton of grime built into it, so I just decided to run with it and see what I could do. And I gotta say, this is looking really cool for just one building and a wall. Now it seems like a perfect time to plant a field. And to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already, I've now survived just over 3,400 days in hardcore Minecraft, and I've loved every minute of it, but I am nearly at 1.4 million subscribers on YouTube, so please subscribe to help me reach that milestone as we jump down into the valley under the first castle in this world to plant a new carrot field. Which I'll be honest, the more time I spend down here, the more time I wanna come back and improve the area a bit further. But that will have to come later, as all of the mud I have is fantastic 
fantastic, but the item I really want is packed mud, which is where my LA powered wheat farm out is going to come in handy today. Look at all that wheat and it's so full so full i'm going to need to craft down a ton of planks into chests to make a bunch of hoppers on top of that i want to bring the wheat all the way up here to the surface level and build a storage barn around it so it's a lot more accessible than flying down into the cave this should be enough storage to last us a good while and then for any overflow we might have i think i can throw a hopper in here composter on top of it with another hopper and this can kind of just snake its way along for now we can just surround this with a bunch of mangrove planks along the back then from here i want a pipe that's going be coming all the way in a quick test here is if we put some ice inside and break it down the water should flow to there perfect quickly running inside the cave over to where we have our setup with the LA farm we can set up a little system inside of here to dispense all of the wheat that we already have into a water stream and bring it up to the surface I'll add that last redstone when it's ready to go otherwise we're gonna lose a lot of the wheat from here we just need to create a water track that's gonna carry the stuff all the way over I forgot to break the ice water column is nearly ready to go i just need to throw some kelp in so it becomes full blocks here are the last bit of kelp and we shoot back up with one final step here adding in the redstone dust and there goes the wheat nope the wheat stopped why'd you stop wheat there goes the wheat which is all now starting to arrive at the top meaning the system is complete next up we should probably build something around this right trying to keep the structure a little on the smaller side we can make it about this far in for the base let's use some granite and mix in a bunch of bricks a few spruce fences as some supports and we can transition into the next layer here which is also going to be where our roof starts for the inside i want to throw in mushroom stem and a little window from there i filled out the trim on the front of the roof for the front of the build i want to do something a little different and have two large doorways to get inside using spruce wood as a trim and for a fun element to divide from the roof let's add in some composters make sure it stays mob safe on the inside we can also add in some spruce doors and trap doors with the front sorted i moved around to add in the walls and roof on the main barn structure but you know me i can't just have a single shape for a build over here so i want to build up a small grain silo attached to the right side this is looking really good here but this grass has got to go but before we get to that uh the inside is even worse so i think we can bring in some oak slabs right along here on both sides and then just bring it up by a slab in the middle with the little lamp next up we really got to replace this grass floor and i'm thinking just coarse dirt itself can do the trick and yes i will go all the way back that alone helped a lot i just need to get my doors back on okay in the time i built this entire thing the wheat is still flowing in from the farm down below i decided to hang around for a bit longer add in a few more details for ourselves and the inside is a little bit more decorated and now all of the wheat is moved over check this out we've got over four double chests of wheat now this wasn't just some side project no 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 this is extremely important as a main goal i have in this world is to connect everything with a road the wheat field is already on the road network that comes all the way down here into the quarry which itself leads into the side city gate so if i grab a little bit of cobblestone and some slabs i now have the ability to connect my auto wheat farm to my auto mud farm with a brand new road this curve right in here should work out for us and then i can use a bridge to transition over into the industrial district we're not focusing on this section today flip we're not focusing on it just focus on getting in the road and then go to the industrial district stay on task you can do it one wide is a wee bit small for carts to travel along so i expanded it by three blocks on both sides now i just need to replace most of the cobblestone to add in different blocks because mass cobblestone looks very 2013. from here i want a bridge going all the way across to the other side and i think some cobble deep slate can work out as a great transition material probably all the way over here this seems wide enough to get some carts through using some bricks for pillars on the four corners top with a little bit of polished granite now for the not so subtle flex on the outside let's use some beacons to actually light this up that's a good little pop right that's that's what it would be now to add in a few more details to the front of this guy we can start with an archway out of polished granite to make it a little bit more reinforced and then to give it a little bit of depth maybe incorporating a few mud stairs more polished granite worked into the top and on these flatter sections just a few soul lanterns and i think that's pretty good which means i just need to repeat it around to the backside. this is starting to look really good for a little bridge but uh uh, unfortunately it can't be water under the bridge <laughs> get it get it because it's water on a bridge 
Uh, this looks really bad in here. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I meant to say is it looks really bad and I want to spend a little bit of time fixing it up because it's very ugly on the inside. We can get rid of the little land sticking out here so it feels like some more water is moving underneath and it is a little bit more substantial. Quickly taking some spruce logs and crafting spruce trap doors. We can make a really subtle archway down here with some spruce slabs on the sides and then we just add in our trap doors all the way across it in the middle, which looks pretty good and I'm... Why did that scare me so much? Okay, so now that we've got the bridge in place, I need to think about the industrial district buildings, which will help guide me on where I need to build the roads with a few residential buildings and shops on the lower level, some storage warehouses down by the docks and moving them up into the mountain. We'll get us some brick production with a bunch of kilns and workstations. But back to the roads for now, where we're gonna bring in a few temporary blocks and try and work our way down here to the dock front I've already made the road for. Along this way, it's actually gonna go down to a wooden dock level closer to the water. The main line is gonna run back along here, where it's gonna go up a little bit before coming down this direction. And boy, oh boy, I got a lot of terraforming to do. I'm gonna fill this in behind the second retaining wall just so I don't have to later. For now, the main road in the residential area is ready to go. And now back to these gross hills I need to figure out. I think we can bring in a retaining wall right back here, which can work its way over something like this. But I do need to reserve enough space on the top for the road to go through to connect into the next building platform. And I don't want this to be flat at all, so we can start slowly sloping it downwards to connect it over there. I spent a lot of time mumbling to myself as I start working out the inner details of this thing and just breaking blocks, replacing them, and working through the whole process of just trial and error. There's no right way to do this thing. I'm trying to figure out ways to create more functional working space that isn't just about raising up some buildings and adding some roofs over it. So down here next to the mud farm, I'm thinking we just create a flatter raised section so it's not at ground level that we can do a few little like workshops, a little work yard, I don't know, things. Stuff that looks like somebody works and lives in here, you know, that's, that's, that's the vibe. A vibe that's going to be need to cl be cleaned up a lot. Outside of that, I do have a lot more of the pathways worked out here, which is starting to look really good. Where I'm trying to create more of blobs of textures instead of just randomizing them. And I think it's giving the result that I was really hoping for. Adding the little retaining wall in back here. And we've got another road leading up here. It's starting to turn into one of those builds that I feel like I'm doing more for me than for making a fun video out of it. With a few finer details added in, it's time to move back into making buildings. But I think this just looks really neat. Jumping up to the one place that I haven't managed to actually build a road to. Let's work on a new redstone farm. I need a machine that's going to convert dirt to mud again. I didn't have a single piece of pointed dripstone at my home to show an example of what I wanted to share. But nearly four. 4,000 blocks away from spawn inside of this mesa. There should be a dripstone cave somewhere. Yes, perfect. There it is. Just need a few of these guys. This should be plenty. And now if we take a piece of mud and put a pointed dripstone underneath it, eventually this will dry into clay. Flying back home and my elytra is nearly dead and so is my shovel. So time for a quick stop at the Wither Skeleton Farm. <laughs> Much better. And 42 free skulls to oh, walls. Look where you're flying in the nether flip. Look where you're flying. But I got 42 more wither skull skulls. Now for this farm, I'm going to need to get a bunch of pointed dripstone blocks. And by that, I mean the very pointy square block that is a cube. I guess cubes have sharp corners, so they are kind of pointy. Outside of that, I also need some pistons, redstone torches, two craft repeaters, dispensers, and some trap doors. Starting by creating a bit of a piston pushing machine over here. Redstone torch underneath and a piston right there. We can set a repeater over here with a redstone dust that can come around. And now anytime I place a block here, that pushes it. Perfect. Aesthetics wise, we do that. We'll need a dispenser to be able to turn this into some mud. Copying the machine that I already built before over in that building. Swoop it down to grab a little bit of water. We can fill that in back here. I need one more. Ignore the missing hearts. My landing was extremely graceful. Now to build our drying rack. This will be the max piston pushing limit right there so we can hook in all of our new pistons another little torch and create a system that loops all the 
way back around here. Or we're supposed to. I'm being a redstone professional. Leave me alone. Professional. To turn this into a drying rack, we need to fill this entire lower section here with our dripstone blocks. Where I think we're going to push it out 12 blocks. Otherwise, this factory building is going to be massive. Hooking up a little bit of a light gray glazed terracotta back here. That should stop the pistons from being able to push it any farther. Or no. No, that, that won't. That won't work at all, actually. That's that's a dumb idea. Obsidian will work, though. And this can be a little decoration. Now for a little test here, this should push all the way over. And perfect. Scuba flip mode. I just need to place in pointed dripstone underneath all of these blocks. One final step. I need a lot more emeralds. To buy a ton of glass. Again. Final step, we just gotta load up a bunch of water bottles here and drop them in the system. The system seems to hold about a stack and a half of dirt right now, which isn't half bad for some free clay when I need it. And a good amount is already converted and it just finished filling in. Enough of this redstone stuff, time to hide it all behind a nice building. But creepers keep on creeping out of this cave, so it's time to seal it in. I also outline what I think we can do for the shape of the building on this inner line of dirt. Then if I need to remove all the dripstone down here, it'd be nice to have a bit of a working space. But now blocks to actually build this thing. First, a bunch of deep slate materials for the roofs. A quick trip into the nether. Grab some blackstone from the piglins. I'm going to need a lot of spruce wood and oh no. Okay, new plant somewhere in here. Saplings. So many saplings. This is all going to be covered up eventually so we can just put them down here and not have to worry about the pods all spreading everywhere. I'll get everything else together and hopefully these will all be grown up. That should be plenty. Quick stop over at the wheat storage to get a few stacks where I can grab the mud that I did earlier and turn it into packed mud. A little diorite to relate back to the other side of the city. Two more quick stops. The first being digging into the tree to get a little more glow lichen. Next to the librarians to buy lamps. And none of my trees have grown. Oh well, good thing I have a wither skelly farm. Please? 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 There we go. The final, 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 final step here just requires a lot of spruce as always. Right into the build though, I want a mangrove section over here with some planks on the bottom. Moving into some strip mangrove log, moving up. And we can do some fun windows out of yellow and orange stained glass. Not everything in the industrial area is dead, so let's do a few leaves down below and some trapdoors for shutters. Working my way back up to the top though, we can grab ourselves some copper and use this to create the roof. This isn't the full height of the build, so the main structure is going to be coming up with some weathered stones. For a front face, then along the side here, I thought we could bring in some spruce planks and cut open some holes for windows. Like this. For the main building roof itself, I want to bring in some deep slate, which will stretch its way all across here. To the next layer though, I am apparently addicted to windows. So let's put even more in. But these are out of glass instead of trap doors again, so it's different. To make it different from the roof, let's try some polished blackstone. Before we throw in the mini roof, the main roof line is gonna be probably out to here. Flattening out just a touch at the top. And here we can just pop it up a touch with our blackstone. And there goes the entire front of the roof, which is looking interesting now. Interesting is good, right? I think so. We'll run with it for now. Going on with the theme of smaller buildings, adding up to a larger factory building, I'm breaking away from the stone structure with some extra visual interest. Next, I want to add in a new smaller building over to the side to finish hiding the clay farm itself with a simple black stone roof on top, where I think this is actually looking really good so far with just one more corner to fill in. And for that, I want to add in a large bell tower in here to allow for the factory to ring in the workday. Then I decided to copy over the bell tower design from the original city bell towers that I had already built to complete it. And now this is starting to look really, really good. Except for the fact that, you know, well, it's still floating over here, but I'm thinking eventually we'll have a stone wall just coming down. Just coming down to ground level in here, but I want to get the ground situated before we figure out how steep that needs to be. I want to continue focusing on the upper industrial area first, and I know I've already built the mud farm, but it's it's not 100% working. I can't figure it out. So I ran back over to the swamp to uh, get a lot more mud to bring back home. This should do it on the mud for now. Now I even found a wandering trader who had mud, chests, and packed mud. Little micro blocks. These are gonna be so perfect. He's gonna stay in the boat in case I want his other stuff. Next, another quick stop back over at the wheat farm to grab even more wheat. 
for of course more packed mud this place up here is going to be containing a bunch of kilns for brick making and whatever else they need to be producing up here cooking down all that good stuff so i think a small little retaining wall or safety wall right here to block out people from being able to get inside is going to be a good idea grab some coarse dirt and i think right here we can start the actual floor level because i don't think grass is really going to fit it since you know it's kind of a dirty area and carts are going to be moving all over the place so we can start incorporating a lot of our brick art well mud brick pathways i've been building for like six hours today so if my brain is a mush uh that's why here's a small path that's going to connect ourselves back up into the factory from where we're going to have our new entrance that i think will be at about this level going all the way across we start working the slabs down instead of the previous stone line it could be a little bit more gradual and then we work our way up into the mountain sticking with the three high and then we go into our polished granite slaps on top i just want to work it all the way up okay maybe a little bit more up here since it's kind of steep regular dirt on the outside and this should clean it up a good amount for now i'll just bring the road all the way down to this layer and then we'll figure out how to swoop it along back here down to there But maybe since I'm thinking about it right now, over here we can have a flatter section that can be for some carts that are waiting to go in to be loaded. And this should work for now, just to get the idea in. As I slowly build yet another mob spawner into the terrain. Now we can move in. Nope, nope, gotta fix it. Oh no, I'm out of grass. I can't be distracted anymore. Okay, inside we go. Back inside, I'm building a circular road going around to create a loop for carts and to leave some space for some more structures, which is where the first kiln is going to come in. Then I think we can start with a base right like this, working into a little entrance right in here to be able to put bricks in and out, adding a little front entrance in here. This thing's inspired by one of my friends, Vigo Man, so I did want to give him a shout out on that. But bringing a little bit of fantasy technology elements like what we got in the dwarves, we have some sort of like an exhaust system here as we're building the kiln up but quickly coming inside for the kiln itself i wanted to bring in a bunch of details like some bricks that are cooking down in here and i thought a fun thing to add would be like some nope out out burning toast rock hopper as something like in the process of smelting and just pile up a few more bricks and slabs around which from the outside looks like a few things are cooking in here hidden in the smoke but i need to stack this thing up much further into the sky all the way up here now i do want the smoke to go all the way up so shift clicking hay bale into the composters that should give a good amount all the way up to here which we can top with a few walls and slabs on top but what will be perfect is adding four more of them around here down in the dwarven cave now i need to pick up a few more campfires which we can get out as a quick trip over to the fisherman that should do a full stack i'm gonna need a lot more copper for this one so let's craft down a little bit of raw copper throw it into the super smelter and get to work on de-aging this copper all the way down to stage two. First one's already finished up i don't quite have enough aged copper here so i'm gonna create my own mini david strolling down the mountainside the rest I already had, thankfully, so I flew around building up the other four brick kilns for this upper section. Except I am still missing a few bits of copper. But while those finish aging down, I want to build some covered work areas to stay out of the sun. I want to use some spruce wood on the outdoor workstations as I cover and working in a few oak trap doors to allow for smoke or heat to not get trapped in the top. We'll detail out everything later on, but first I want to get the structures in place with the first storage shed coming in here out of birch, diorite, and some white concrete with a few spruce elements on the front then working in some composters and dark oak on for the roof jumping to the back i did build out a second storage building for some fuel which i'm using blocks of coal and blackstone to build a huge pile of coal inside this is a work zone after all so i think we'll need to add in a ton of carts transporting materials around the entire zone but with all those beginning elements done i wanted to create a cooling area for all of the bricks that are coming out of the kilns and yes i i did add even more carts to the brickworks with some more details added in this is really starting to look completed and i love it so very much but it's going to be time to move down the hill and focus on the rest of the district but first we have pots and little vases and flower pots if only we had the 1.20 flower pots that'd be really cool in here but you know it's fine i'll just wait for a little bit longer we've got a well over here and the factory building itself still is absolutely disgusting on the inside but it has clay and i just think that's neat now for the moment you've all been begging for it's time to build a storage room for dirt just just 
types of dirt and other blocks i guess like mud gravel maybe sand first step though we need a ton of oak planks to craft chests for this i want to store dirt grass horse dirt rooted dirt but i have none gravel sand packed mud mud and muddy roots let's start by digging this back a little bit into the hill so we can hide it in the mountainside first up before we put in all of our chests let's bring in a little spruce along the back edge i'm thinking we go four tall and double chests all the way across i want to put some markers along the front of this or what items are going to be stored but i need to make Make sure that the grass doesn't grow over so this needs to be packed mud dark oak pillars on the side and then i laid out all of the blocks i want to sort inside of these chests with a little copper in front to separate it now instead of grass blocks i did put moss in here otherwise it's going to grow over my dirt and i like my dirt we're just going to borrow this rooted dirt to finish the storage nobody's going to know much better i had these little archways in front and i think it's a good decoration we can still easily get all of the chests which is fantastic and then up here i want to bring in a little bit of strip mangrove moving all the way across then we can extend out a few of these little guys doesn't line up perfectly but maybe we just cover this out to here and connect these pillars into the ground that we can use as some big entry doorways to get into this storage warehouse here above the chest so we can't see the top let's just fill this in with regular slabs which really closes it all in now we're gonna finally head back over to the starter house and look at all of this stuff that's terracotta that doesn't go there i forgot a spot for clay oh no maybe we only need one spot for gravel that should be fine i also forgot puzzle but that's in here now you don't have to leave the angry comments i know i found it unless i forgot something else then leave the angry comments that's fine Look how many shulkers we freed up now. These are all empty. We've already done so much resource gathering today. So look as the building magically appears in front of you. I definitely didn't spend the last two hours getting materials together after I had already spent an hour moving materials into the storage room itself. Wow. Would you look at that? We got a new building over here. Oh my gosh. Need to get a floor down there with a roadway, but maybe first we just get a few glow berries. Definitely one over here to help keep mobs away and glow lichen perfectly glowing during the night now and now with the addition of actually having a road in here this is going to be accessible and much better just ignore the floating blocks that is a future flip problem so you've heard of first warehouse but have you heard of second warehouse on the lower level here i think it's about time we can add in another one industrial places need a lot of storage for stuff right it's yeah, it makes sense, I think. I don't know. But as always, I need more spruce logs. Because I'm already down to 14. And much better. I'm sure I'm going to need more, so let's put some of our saplings right back down. Over at the build now, I want to start with some large archways stretching across to create a more open-air warehouse. Running some spruce stairs all the way across the front here. And I can start inching my way up to the max height, which I think about here is gonna do it. And then slabs across the middle. Take our way back into the hill a touch. Let's bring in some polished granite for a base and clear the rest of this out. Top of the polished granite, I wanna bring in a few bricks and some regular granite to look a little bit more aged. Bit like that. Up to the storage room, grabbing a tiny bit of sand. To contrast all of our bricks, I wanted to bring a little bit of this in just for that extra pop of color. And we can bend the stairs coming back down the other side. Blend it a little bit better. Let's use some trap doors. Hello, llamas. Would you like to work in the industrial district? Move things around? Yeah, I know you would. Okay, just come with me. Don't kill each other. There has to be a fence down here somewhere. Please, anywhere. Where's a fence? Have fun. Ow. Have fun. Have fun until you calm down. At least the warehouse is looking pretty good so far. Really, guys? Really, you're shooting across the river to try and hit me. Come on now. That's that's a little sad. That's a little desperate. Since the roof is going to be working into the landscape here, we can actually remove these and bring in a little bit of stone so we can build a bit of a barrier for carts to not really fall on top of the roof. This should work, and then we can just fill in the backside with some coarse dirt. To stick on theme for the roof itself, let's grab some cobble deep slate and make... Deep slate tile stairs. Sticking on theme, I'm adding in a deep slate tile roof with some windows to break up the shape. Now, for very important lore reasons, the uh, the warehouse is just waiting for goods to come in. Not that I just 
don't want to do the interior right now. It's very important that the warehouse remains empty for the foreseeable future until I can find a reason to do it. Before we jump up the hill again, I'm completing the little workstation here before I uh, forget about it again as a small blacksmith forge for making tools. And randomly a little chicken coop over here where I need to find some chickens. Let's grab a few seeds and hope something's still alive over here. Nope, that's a pig. That That's a pig. A chicken. No, don't run with... Oh, I should probably put the sword away. Okay, now follow me. I'm so far away. Egg, egg. Maybe that could be our second chicken. All right, buddy, it is the middle of the night, but we got to make it home. We're so close. You stay here. I got to take out of a few problems. Okay, come here now, chicken. Buddy, buddy, come on. Get across the river. I have spent way too long getting you over here. Please. No creepers? Okay, you get it. Nope, nope, nope. This way. Check it. I hate mobs. Get in here. Do you get a child? No. I kind of forgot that I actually have, you know, a chicken farm over here for eggs. And that's the amount it's produced in 3,500 days in a world. Okay, maybe I actually need a new chicken farm. <gasps> He's in the coop. Look at him. He's cute. Yay. Have a child. Maybe. Maybe have a child. You got a child. Looking back at where I started today, it's crazy to think I already have a mud farm, a clay farm built into a huge brickworks up the mountain, and two warehouses along the docks that will store all of my double dirt. Oh, I guess I never finished the road here. Hmm. Oops. We'll fix that up real quick like nobody noticed. I know it's an industrial area, but it doesn't mean we can't have a few trees. Gotta offset that pollution, you know? Where did my chickens go? You're... I see you down there, sir. The llamas don't seem to be attacking me anymore. That's good. Where's the other chicken? You know what? You can work the blacksmith now. Just don't leave, okay? Or don't, don't die in the magma. Speaking of animals that are just so easy to work with, up here, I need to add in another building. As we have the brickworks and a bunch of carts to move around, I thought we could throw in a small stables building with three stalls three stalls should be good bring a little bit of mangrove in here i wanted to go with something rather simple up here so i'm just adding in a few random details throughout to make it all work and just give it a little pop of color here with the mangrove but otherwise blending into the environment pretty well with our spruce There we go, a little different, but I like it. Let's go find some royal steeds. I really wanna make a giant horse stables pasture somewhere in the world, but for now, let's just get a few saddles and see who's on top of the mountain, because for some reason, they're always up here. Ah, mountain horse, I need you. First horse is secured, number two. And there goes number three. Okay, I grabbed a fourth horse, which I wanna hook in right here, so he's hanging out by the cart. And hopefully that lead doesn't break. Everything I can think of for the brickworks is pretty much ready to go, except we probably need some people to work it and they need homes. Am I really just making my own city builder game in Minecraft over here? What's wrong with me? Well, one thing is uh, I'm nearly out of rockets and uh, my electric's almost broken. First up, quick stop at the sugarcane farm to make a little bit of paper. Find my way down the mountain over to the monolith where I am running out of gunpowder. We'll have to chill at the gas farm a little later on, but for now, I at least have rockets. We can tackle two stones with one bird here on the next step by grabbing some emeralds to trade with the stonemasons. I'm gonna need a lot of bricks for these next builds. And there we go, the wings are all better and we got some bricks. I still wanna give each building inside of the city a purpose outside of just residential. So over here, I think we can theme this after being a smithy. So along the street right here, there'll be a little entrance to get inside of like a smith workshop on the base. But to get up to the second floor where we'll have the residential section, I wanna bring in a little dark oak slab walkway. And then for a small railing, it's gonna be a little wonk, but oak trap doors will be fine, I'm sure they'll be fine totally fine yeah hey at least he used to walk up it and we can put a door right here as a bit of a division though moving up the base is going to be out of brick and then from there i want to move into more terracotta jungle planks and strip jungle logs to represent this being a smithy we can extend a little street sign out here and just slap an anvil on for the doorway into the workshop we want to do something a little bit bigger so i'm thinking spruce trap doors dark oak at the base and we just make a really really tall big dark oak door big door back into the granite at base over here, we can work in a little bit of dripstone itself and continue on with this new theme of texture variation that I'm doing that is trying to be more intentional about where things are going in. I don't know. It's fancy words for uh, trying to make shading, I guess. That's looking pretty good for the base over here to transition into the terracotta. I don't want it just to be bland and boring. So let's work in a bit of a balcony across here. 
this will actually work out pretty well. As a break point to move into the next layer, I want to work in a small covering on the balcony here and a little soul lantern for light. You know what though? I've got a bit of an idea that we can do here in the balcony. Let's take some scaffolding and grab some flower pots and they can have a little flower garden on their balcony. Quick trip over to the flower village to grab a few. Azure bluets, white tulips, and pink tulips should do. For something a little like this should work. With that done, I move forward on finishing off the walls to the buildings and added in a large chimney on the back for some smithy vibes. For a little extra detail here, I staggered out the campfires to reduce the smoke, so there's a little bit more variation. And we can throw some glass in here for the window, going with the light gray so it's a little bit more opaque. But from there, it's roofing time. Wandering traders confuse me so much. They just appear at the weirdest times. But the building is now done and it's looking really good. Moving right along to the next buildings where you think in all of these shulkers, I'd have what I need. No, no, don't be silly. Of course, none of it's here. Raided my way through the storage room and guess what? We have even more shulkers. And just like that, you can watch as a massive building appears before your very eyes inside of the city industrial district with this Minecraft YouTuber magic of off camera material collecting because I didn't want to put in any more clips of me opening chests to find stuff because we've done that so much already today. But we can hide in a nice little field over here in the corner for a little city garden carrot patch. People got to eat, so I think these are going to be some perfect little decoration options to fill in some spaces. Because shulker boxes, they're a vibe, but they're not the vibe I want. Now, I'm not too sure what I want to do with the back quite yet, so I've left it blank for now. But hey, you know, at least it has a wall. For one final detail in here before we really get into the street life, I wanted to bring in another market stall. Using a little bit of moss cobblestone, diorite slabs, and smooth quartz slabs. And something like that should work out. But what do I put in here? Let alone put over there. Would you look at that? We're at day 3,503. We've been doing this for well over 170 days. Okay, let's build a meat. I can't even word. Okay, let's build a dock. Yeah. I want to grab a ton of oak logs for this. Then taking spruce logs, we can craft into planks for a bunch of slabs, a few trap doors, and stairs. But more slabs. So many slabs. I want to start with designing a really simple docks down here along the water. That's going to be split on two different levels for larger vessels to dock at the higher dock for docking just ignore the fact that this river literally goes nowhere that that's a future foot problem but current foot needs to focus on placing in spruce slabs for the entire lower dock and that is starting to look much much better as an additional add i want to add a few small staircases for people to get up and down where we can do some trap doors and spruce fences as a form of a support take it the same idea i built the second dock and added in some ladders to get out of the water if i do fall in which will definitely be used a lot in the future as uh, again we're coming over to the wheat farm to grab even more wheat over to the dirt storage building to grab some mud and craft ourselves packed mud but then we can start clearing this land out over here and figure out some way we can curve a road all the way down. Looks like this is actually going to work out really well. It's a bit smaller, but uh, it'll be okay. Now we've just got to rebuild out some of these retaining walls so it looks a little bit more put together. I think we can extend the stone all the way out here around so it can be a little bit more supportive. I might expand the city up here further, so I don't think I'll put in a retaining wall for now. We can just kind of smooth it out a little bit. The grass will regrow here, so that should be totally fine, and I think it's about time. This lava has been scaring me for far too long. A little bit of texture added in here instead of the cobblestone. We can do a little acacia log and tough, and that's should do the trick we're currently in stage one of this section of the city so the finer details are gonna have to come in the next episode except i really want to situate the builds in the environment a little bit more which means we can build in some custom trees like this little oak tree here next to the storage building which is looking pretty good oh i forgot my bed next i want to build some spruce trees up here along the mountainside which means i'm gonna need a lot of spruce leaves Leaves are all gone, but this is uh, looking a little ugly up here. So let's chop down the logs too. <laughs> Thankfully, spruce is very easy to get, and it's time to make some trees in the morning. Somehow, this is the first time I've built some large custom spruce trees in this world, and we're now 3,500 days into the series, which is kind of crazy, but here we are adding in five new ones behind the storage room, which really helps it fit a lot into these builds. And for those of you that have stuck around till now, let's update the world map to see everything new. Buying some new maps from the cartographers and picking up some glass panes to preserve everything. From there, I'm taking seven maps at a time to make sure I don't miss anything and start 
started flying around the spawn region to update every little thing I've created around here that adds up to the awesome hardcore survival base we have so far. Next, I need to take all these guys again and copy them to make two copies of each. With that done, next up, I'm taking a single copy of each of them to use the glass pane and lock it in place. This will forever preserve the copy on the wall. And this is looking really, really good with everything coming together. There we go. Episode 32 locks it in and our new section of the city over here is nearly as big as the first one and that is looking so good seeing it all coming together soon they'll be connected don't forget to subscribe if you're new just to see how far i can last inside this hardcore world and with that my friends i'll catch y'all on the flip side look at this little baby map there's not even a tree on it